Hi everybody, my name is TJ Smith. I'm president of EAW and we're here in the engineering conference room at our headquarters in Whitensville, Massachusetts with Director of Engineering, Jeff McKinnon. Thanks for joining us, Jeff. Glad to be here. And we want to talk a little bit about uh, new technology, about the isophasic waveguide. Let's start off by explaining to people why this is important or what is the isophasic waveguide doing acoustically? Sure, so uh, line arrays are a very common format. One of the reasons uh, for this is it's taking advantage of closely spaced and precisely aimed uh, devices to create more consistent coverage in large venues than traditional point sources. Uh, and at low frequency, um, the devices are close enough together uh, so that you can achieve this effect without a waveguide. But at a high frequency, the coverage needs to narrow. So only using a single or two sources uh, in a given loudspeaker, you need a waveguide to uh, produce this narrow effect. And this is so that the listeners uh, hear only a few contribution from a few uh, loudspeakers at their, their highest uh, frequency. Well, that's a little uh, counterintuitive in my mind, right? So uh, the listener should only hear a few loudspeakers at a time. Why wouldn't we want them to hear all of the loudspeakers? Sure, so take someone uh, uh, out here in the coverage. If they're hearing contribution from a loudspeaker lower in the array, uh, first that contribution can create uh, interference that would uh, uh, lessen the SPL actually in that uh, location or if they're not getting that level of interference it could simply cause time smear reducing the quality of their experience. Okay so that uh, begs the next question and that is how, how is it doing this? How is it accomplishing that? Sure so uh, here's a simple um, drawing of uh, EW's isophasic waveguide. It's normalizing the path lengths from the entrance to the exit uh, of the waveguide. You can think of this um, as um, replicating a much deeper um, horn that would extend actually past the, the um, back of the loudspeaker enclosure itself. Okay, so I, I've got one here that I've kind of half taken apart and I've got it kind of stuck together. We can sort of split it open, right? You can see what's going on in here. So uh, relate this piece I have in my hand to what you drew there. Sure, so this is roughly that black outline here, and the blue core is this intersection here. So as the energy uh, comes around um, the core from the entrance to the exit, it is forced to follow similar path lengths. So it needs to follow, uh, the center has the same path length as the edge as any other location uh, in between. Okay. So pretty simple, um, but I'm imagining every other manufacturer of a line array um, has to deal with the same problem. So why is this one special? Sure, so some other common um, waveguide designs are, there's a simpler cone profile that relies on refraction uh, to produce the isophasic effect. Uh, other designs use um, multiple veins and apertures, which can result in time smear. EAW's isophasic waveguide is smooth throughout and uses a single core. This helps preserve the acoustic uh, impulse, resulting in clearer sonic output. Okay, so where is this new product or this new technology used in EAW's product line? Sure, so it's used uh, in a dual driver configuration in our KF810P line array system and it's used in a single driver configuration in our brand new NTX 210L line array system. All right, and do you think uh, you have any plans to use it anywhere else? Anything coming up? Yes, absolutely. All right, cool. Well, thanks for your time today, Jeff. And thank you very much for joining us. Stay on this channel for more new products from EAW and more information on technology.